Well, hello, DMV. What is happening? How is everybody doing in D.C., Maryland, Virginia, Northern Virginia, Southern Maryland, Northern Maryland, I mean, everywhere. How are you guys? It's so great to have you on another episode of Living on Music. Uh, my name is Steve Houck, and this is... Um, this is going to be a fun one. This is some somebody I've wanted to have on for a long time, and uh, my dream came true. If you can see behind me right now, um, I'm at the Pearl Street Warehouse. Um, I wish I was actually at the Pearl Street Warehouse, but I am at the Pearl Street Warehouse in my virtual world with a venue every week. Um, this is where my guest Bobby Thompson tonight played on February 1st, um, and that was, well, you know what happened after that. This is one of the, the last live gigs, if not the last live gig that Bobby played. Um, and so it is really, really exciting to have, he is one hell of a musician. I know we have a lot of people already tuning in to, to see it, our conversation uh, with Bobby and hear him play some of the music with the bands during the pandemic even. Um, and um, we'll get to Bobby in just a, a minute. The Pearl Street Warehouse behind me, many of you know it very well. Um, it is part of DC's phase two live entertainment pilot that was instituted by Mayor Bowser in DC. Um, the venues that were chosen for this pilot, um, which have been going for about a month and they're figuring it out, um, a little less than a month that some of the gigs have started, but the Gala Hispanic Theater, the Kennedy Center, the amazing Hamilton where my buddy Soul Roots played a couple of days ago and it looked like a great gig on, on social media, um, and also Union Stage. Um, City Winery was asked uh, to, if they wanted to do it, and they declined for their own reasons. So that's what happened. That goes right into what we're talking about first tonight. I usually talk about the National Independent Venue Association. I know that I'll never stop talking about them. But let's talk a little bit about Independent Venue Week. Um, it's already started. It's two days deep. And what I love is that my guest next Monday will be Steve McKay, who runs School of Rock in Alexandria. And we get to talk about not only what's been going on for them during the pandemic, which I have to talk about with people, and it's important we know, and especially how it's involving kids at School of Rock, but his evolution from a musician into running School of Rock. These guys are, are helping, they're, they're, they're sponsoring, they're, they're supporting the Independent Venue Week this week, and it's independentvenueweek.com. That's all you need to know, and it's really easy. Write it down. Go ahead. I'll give you a second. And it's it, what it is, it, it's an incredible um, thing, and I love that School of Rock, these kids who are hoping to be musicians and play in venues, they hope these venues are still going. I mean, can you imagine being a kid and thinking, oh, my God, are there going to be a lot of venues to play in? Well, we hope so, and we're, we're really counting on it. Independent Venue Week started a couple of days ago and it is amazing they have auctions of incredible incredible stuff uh they have um uh, some amazing shows at venues across the united states um that are in the venues without crowds um all the way across the united states they have um, a series of discussion panels featuring professional music musicians from the music industry um, this is an amazing thing you guys and it also will lead you into helping support independent venues so please Independent Venue Week um, is going right now. Go to independentvenueweek.com. Check in. See if you can do something that not only you enjoy, but that'll help some independent venues. Because I'm telling you, the quote that I really get hit by really, really hard is, um, independent venues are incredibly important to our musical history as a country. And they're incredibly important to our future. And I think that that is not an, an overstatement of exactly what the story is with venues right now. Some people that are doing some amazing things right here in Alexandria are Classical Movements. My, my dear buddies, Nita Helms and Johan van Sly, they're amazing people. Um, I went to one of their shows in the Secret Garden. Well, here we go. This is how, what, what they're going to do, and it's called Sounds of Joy and Light. And they're doing a whole concert series through as far as they can go, as long as it doesn't freeze. And in, in Virginia, you know, you can really get some late shows. They've got a whole bunch of things booked. Um, through the next few weeks. So please go to Classical Movements uh, slash Secret Garden Concerts. But here's what they have Halloween, and you guys should make a note of this. This is going to be amazing. At uh, two, 1 o'clock on 
with Halloween. Dress your family in costumes, socially distanced. You're wearing a mask. It's Halloween, right? You'll have a mask on already. Um, wear a safe mask or maybe under the mask. And they're going to do socially distancing costume contests. And they're going to have high-end people from around the area, including the mayor. They're going to have some other people. And they have some amazing entertainment, too. And I think what people would love to know is that Drew Owen's going to be there. Excuse me, Musico the Magnificent will be there, who's had a lifelong lo love of magic. This is a guy who performs for birthday parties, special events. He plays as a wizard called Provencer Fizzwhistle, Whiffle, excuse me. But the big deal is Drew is the cellist who has played with the National Symphony Orchestra, the Baltimore Symphony, the Washington National Opera, and he does incredible things with magic, with music. He's a really unique guy, and he's going to be in the Secret Garden from 1 to 2.30. You go past that, and you have one amazing lady. Uh, Marissa Renyi is the principal second violin of the National Symphony Orchestra. She's been there since 1996. So, guys, we're talking 24 years. She doesn't look, I mean, I look at her, you know, uh, uh, you know, and, and she doesn't look, tw you know, like she could have been there that long. Very young looking. But what an incredible player. She has played around the world with just incredible people in the symphony world. But what I loved is that she's also developed a series of children's programs which she performs at the Kennedy Center um, around greater Washington, D.C., throughout the United States. She was also the co-creator and the host of the National Symph Symphony Orchestra's Young People Concerts. So this is this is just sounds like an amazing experience. If you guys, if you feel safe to go out, if you want to get outside, you can't go trick-or-treating because a lot of places, I guess, have, have toned that down. Try to go to the Secret Garden um, on Halloween and you go to classicalmovementsagain.com and it's slash secret gardens and you can go to live events and you'll find these sounds of joy and, and light. See what you can do to do that. It, it sounds to me, I'm not going to be in town or I'd be down there with a, with a costume, not like a kid's costume. Yeah. The kids are going to be, be more part of this, but they're going to have judging. It's going to be an amazing experience. So I, 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 I say go to classicalmovements.com slash secret gardens and, uh, and check that out. Um, I had Ron Neumeyer on uh, about uh, a month or two ago, who runs Band House Gigs, uh, one of the most incredible organizations musically in this area. I have had the great luck to sing at two Band House Gigs concerts at the Fillmore and the Barnes. Um, Ron and his band of, uh, not thieves, but band of guys who have been who run Band House Gigs together um, under Ron have put on two of the most entertaining, wonderful funny, musically just special um, shows, and they're called Band House to Your House. Go to Band House Gigs on Facebook. That's all you have to do. You scroll right down. They have it on YouTube. They have it on Facebook and some other links. They, these guys, it's humor and music thrown together. It's like a variety show. It reminds me almost of Monty Python at times, uh, you know, Carol Burnett going way back, but things that are not just music and interviews. I mean, it didn't make me feel like we're dreary here on Living on Music at all, but it is a spectacularly fun show and they showcase some great musicians. Um, I got a couple pings last night because they did show Young Americans at the Fillmore, the Bowie finale, and I got to sing front and center or over to the left, actually, or the right, um, and next to these incredible people for that, for that song and did a couple others, Blue Jean and Ashes to Ashes. But that is an incredible experience um, to watch this and watch music. So go to Bandhouse Gigs, look at episode two. Um, it's the second edition of their live streaming. I totally recommend it. And I love Ron and Daniel and Dave and Chuck and all the guys. Go check out Bandhouse Gigs, um, Bandhouse to Your House on Facebook and YouTube. It's wonderful. I want to go out a quick thank you to that I do to all of my guests here on Living on Music. Um, I have just been blessed. The last few weeks with the Birchmere, boy, to have Gary Olsey and Michael Jaworik on talking about the Birchmere, it was a stirring thing. And we've got, you know, close to 2,000 views, and we're really excited to have done a show with that. It's great. Gary said at the end, let's do it again. That's always good for the founder of the Birchmere to say that. And he said, and I said, we'll do it in person. And I know David wants to do it in person as well, our EP. So we'll talk to them. But uh, a couple of quick shout outs to two of my previous guests, Ali Handel who is a spectacular artist, a guitarist in her own right, but she plays with this band right over here. They are ragdolls, and they are an Aerosmith tribute experience. And I am, you know, buddies with uh, Marlene, Marlene Angelitas and Steph Paines from Les Zeppelin, who blow the roof off as an all-female tribute band to Led Zeppelin. These guys are doing a live show Thursday night. 
at seven o'clock live Aerosmith. Oh my gosh, we have our ticket booked. We're watching it on our big screen because you can dial in your your website, the Smart TV. But it is an Aerosmith tribute show. These this is top musicians. Ali is spectacular, one of my favorite people I've ever had in the show. Um, and they are going to be doing this. So go to the website you see scrolling right over here, uh, Ragdoll Band. Um, dot veeps dot com and it's eight bucks okay eight bucks to see this show for an hour or more and then anyone who buys a ticket to that can watch it for six days so if you can't watch all of it but if you're an Aerosmith fan like me I saw him when I was 15 years old at Madison Square Garden one of the greatest shows of my life love Allie love this show Ragdolls live Thursday night seven o'clock go to that website if you can uh, we're gonna about to get into our interview with Bobby Thompson I know um, everybody's waiting for that it's really really exciting for me to, to be able to talk to Bobby before we do that I'm gonna plug one more time Eric Scott uh, one of my favorite musicians of this entire area love Eric had him on living on music you go to zebra go to videos scroll down you'll find our show um, he's had an incredibly um, challenging um, uh, pandemic. He lost his dad, um, yet he's been able to create music. And this album that he just released called Peace Bomb, I'm telling you, I was driving to pick up my partner, Suzanne, at the airport when she was coming back from seeing her grandson. And I listened to this record and I thought I was listening to some, some classic record from the 70s, some soul pop, some soul R&B pop record. It was spectacular. Um, what you need to do is go to Eric Scott Music and find this, buy it. He was going to give it to me free. I'm impressed. I got a lot of free music. I was like, no, I'm buying it right now. Come on, man. It's it's now. So you can go in. You can get this record. It is spectacular. You'll love every second of it. If you loved Soul Train music, if you loved Marvin Gaye, if you loved a lot of different of the tempt this is this is a spectacular record, partly produced by my buddy Jim Ebert from Cancer Can Rock, too, and a lot of great people. Andy Hamburger. I can't even mention all the mess uh, musicians on it. Um, I was overwhelmed to be thanked also on the liner notes. Um, that that doesn't happen often to press. Um, it was really, really a, a huge honor. And Eric, thank you so much because I'm here to help musicians. I'm, I'm not here as a critic. Sure, we'll bounce around topics on our shows and we may have some fun talking about that stuff. But largely, I'm here to I'm here to help everybody get out there, get marketed. And God, what great music we have. Go get that Peace Bomb record. We're going to show going into Bobby's uh, interview uh, as we as we take a, um, a last uh, little run here, um, the Peace Bomb video. We're going to show about two minutes of it. Um, this is this is a beautiful piece. The song is about instead of all the violence and craziness and this in the world, we're going to drop a peace bomb. And Eric played this on my show acoustically. He produced it um, with his guys over the last you know number of months, years. Um, they used a young child in this video because it represents the childlike optimism and absence of cynicism that so many people have lost right now. I, I'm included. I've had some tough times, especially with the election. You don't know how you feel one day. You're just flipping out. Uh, he wanted to f have people feel like they were kids and, and when they didn't have a care in the world. Um, the kid in this video just kind of loses himself in the music. It's great. It, it's wonderful. It's his imagination. He's too busy a kid to worry about the world around him. And, you know, sometimes although we want to be responsible and know what's going on. We need that, you guys. Here's a little bit of Peace Bomb right now before we go and talk to the wonderful, amazing Bobby Thompson. Eric Scott dropping a Peace Bomb. Let's come together, cause this is serious There's a situation that I must mention I believe it needs our attention Hatred, injustice, an epidemic gaining ground Let's stop pointing fingers and spread more love around But I can be waiting on you so I'll tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna set up Yeah. 
Well, there's a quote on Bobby Thompson's website uh, that says this. Um, it's been said that creativity takes courage and self-expression is a way to show the world your inner soul. Um, and in many ways, I think that overall, that accurately describes my guest tonight, Bobby Thompson. Um, this is a guy who can spend an evening entertaining a room with, you know, acoustic guitars in his songs, and the next night have people grooving big time to the same songs with different band inc incarnations. Just a wonderful selection of presentation that Bobby Thompson has. Um, among other acc accolades over the years, he won a 2018 Whammy for Best Blues Album for his 2018 EP release, The Acoustic Sessions. Um, which was a preview of his 2019 self-titled record. There's strong overtones of blues um, in Bobby Thompson's music and in his writing, uh, although he sees himself as a more folk blues singer-songwriter, again, sometimes solo, sometimes with a, a couple of different incarnations in his bands. Um, he has fronted bands like Blue Heart Revival and Revelator Hill, uh, has been a sideman for people like Justin Jones, Laura Sigaris, uh, Soja for three months back in 2009, and he has been active during the pandemic. He's been one of those musicians that has really been able to find some, some uh, activity to keep him sane. And I know that's been a big deal for musicians across the, the board. Uh, in fact, he will be playing uh, to a limited audience um, at the Birchmere on November 20th with both of his incarnations of his two bands. Um, I am really, really lo looking forward to this. Uh, really respected and revered uh, musician in this area. And uh, without further ado, let's welcome Bobby Thompson. How are you, Bobby? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Um, it's funny. I've had a, a number of people on, and your name is kind of sparked up about people that uh, that that are really respected around here mu musically during the during the show. Um, so it's great to have you on. Um, I wanted to start off, and there's going to be a day where I'm not going to have to do this and ask people how they've been during a pandemic. Um, hopefully, it's a one-time thing in our lives that we have to ask, but. You've been doing some neat stuff. You've been kind of continuing to 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 do uh, your own music as well as kind of find past music and make compilations. How are you doing and how have you handled this, though, as a musician during this time? I, I think I've handled it probably like a lot of us, ups and downs and, you know, sideways. And some days seem normal, some days seem really strange. Right. But, um, you know, that's kind of like the music business. Right. So it's just a little more amplified right have you have you found anything that you've been doing that's different than you maybe some things uh, not even musically that you've you've done i know dave chap um dave chapel had, had started gardening and other people have found ways to cook and do different things yeah. have you found any interesting new hobbies by any chance i've done a little bit of that too a little bit of, of gardening a little bit of yard work that i doing things that i always said that i didn't have time to do right but not have time Right. And that includes songwriting, too. So a little bit of everything around the house. I, I love that. Um, what, I, what we talked a little bit about in one of our pre-meetings, and this is wonderful, is that you found that you, you, you know, again, finding things to do, keeping yourself busy. You were able to go down into the basement and start sifting through some amazing eight millimeter uh, film of your childhood. H how did that come up in terms of how you were looking at that? Well, first it started with uh, archiving uh, cassette tapes. Uh, some of the old stuff that I played on in the 90s, the Watt Frazier material. Right. And uh, I knew there were some eight millimeter, uh, you know, the old round tapes um, somewhere in the house. I couldn't find them. Well, my mom kept telling me they're in here somewhere and I found them. And I, uh, I don't have a projector that works. So I took them to a guy and have them transferred and so that was fun to see some old stuff from the 1970s. Oh, I bet. We'll talk a little bit about, about that part of your life, your childhood in a minute. But um, what I really loved is that you 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 took a song that I believe um, is going to come out on your um, early spring 20, 2021 record uh, yeah. called Someone Else's Blues, and you applied it to some of that footage. Um, how did that mix for you? What was the way it, it, it felt like that was put together? It was one of those... It was one of those things like the song itself, where a song like Someone Else's Blues or My Everything, I just kind of sat down and I wrote it. Did some editing, but the main bulk of it just kind of happened. So when I tried the, the video editing with the, the old footage, I just attempted it, and it just worked out. It was just kind of those, you work on things, you work on things, and then 
it kind of just comes together unexpectedly. So again, I only did it. I put it together. I did a little bit of editing. And happy with it. Had you done any? Had you done any video kind of editing before in your life? I've done some. I mean, I'm not a pro with video editing, iMovie things. Really simple uh, editing softwares. No, oh, that's great. And, and there's a number of musicians. I know Cindy Santana, um, Blackman Santana, began to produce videos for her new record. She'd never done it. I know Marlene Angelitas from Les Zeppelin did the same thing. It's funny how people are are grasping on. Well, we're going to take we're going to take a little bit of a a, a, a little bit of a clip of this because it's so wonderful. The song is great, uh, as all your music is. But uh, I love some of the images that come out um, from this. Um, this is uh, a little snippet of someone else's blues. I couldn't tell if you wanted me anymore So I left and went down to the market store The days of drinking left me far behind So I washed my hands Watch the traffic signs Summer's by the pool The bees would sting us up Water was cool We'd fight over little stuff School wasn't fun But we did it anyways I can't get past the fact we wasted so many days I can't get past the fact we wasted so many days oh, that is that is amazing who are the who, who's everybody in that video well those are my two older sisters and uh yeah there's there's a few of us in there I think there's one clip where I was about to become Superman I don't know if you saw right. that in there but, right yeah. oh God that yeah. is that Never is fantastic. Okay. Yeah. I Did it really? Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's really great. Um, you've been playing uh, some gigs. Uh, I know um, we're going to show a little bit of a clip from my, our buddy, our, our mutual buddy, Stevie Combs, the Little Feet Man, um, yeah. uh, at, outside of Jam and Java in September. Uh, we'll, we'll see a little bit of that in, in a minute. And you're going to be playing the Birchmere again on November 20th, which is going to be really exciting. It says 50th birthday celebration. I'm turning 50. There you go. God, man, you're a, you're a young man, as far as I'm concerned. I got you by about nine years somehow. But um, that is, it must feel good, though. And I know in my mid midlife cover band world where I play out, and we just did a gig Saturday in front of about 100 and some odd people, it really yeah. feels good, doesn't it, to play in front of people again? It does. I mean, I, you know, the last two, uh, the last two we did outside, um, it was kind of a brand new feeling. It's like, starting over again and this yeah. is like the next step of starting over so yeah it, it's really first, in, first time indoors so it's really neat that um that, that some of these venues have been able like the state theater uh as well as being able to open up these outdoor machinations of their lives i mean it's still it's still a bear we had gary and mike michael on from the birchmere on on the last show talking all about it and only being able to fill up certain venues, certain amount of people, but it'll be—I bet it'll be a blast. You haven't—you haven't played the Birchmere since it reopened. I—I I, uh, I was a guest of Laura Segueras uh, a few years ago. Oh, great! But that was it for me so far. Oh, that's—that's that's fantastic. That yeah, first Laura Segueras will be at my show soon. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, let's talk a little bit about. You as a as a youngster, we just looked at some of that video. So let's harken back. You were you are from here, uh, raised in in Arlington, um, and we talked a little bit about how the music began to evolve for you. Um, and I love the story about your your uncle's albums. Talk a little bit about how those influenced your young years of music. Yeah, I used to go to my uncle's all the time as a kid. Um, I don't think he made it into the video there, but I do have some old clips I can show him later. But he had the record collection, everything from Santana and Hendrix to all the jazz guitar players. And I would just listen to a record and ask him if I could borrow it. And he said, no. So I would just sneak one out. And, uh, you know, this, we kind of have this joke like now that, you know, every time I go over there, he's like, don't take anything. <laughs> don't take it. He's like, Les Paul, don't take it. No. 
Oh, that's great. I love that. And did, did, what, when did, how did music evolve for you as a, as a kid and, and, and into your teens? And how did it, how did you begin to think, hey, this is going to be something I'm going to do pretty much for the rest of my life and it might be a main thing? Well, it didn't make sense at the time, but I can look back on it now. And, and right, after that, right after that period um, in high school, our senior class, for some reason, we were throwbacks. We were listening to Cream and Credence and 60s and The Grateful Dead, and, you know, right in the middle of the 80s. So Love there was that. something there and we just latched on to that music and we just stuck with it and we practiced a lot. We just, you know, went back and then we went back to the blues and jazz and the roots to really learn where it came from. And then I went to music school by the time I was 20. So from the time I was about 16, 17, three or four years was kind of an accelerated period of absorbing everything I could. And and that that was the beginning of the evolution. How did you how did you take that? What was the the step that made you think you know wow this is actually going to be it? You know what 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 when did that happen? It was probably when I got back from music school, which was about a year. I was in L.A. I got back, and that's when I started hanging out and meeting people like Bobby Parker and Mark Frazier and oh. the Nighthawks and these other guys that were already doing it. Right. And I was just trying to again trying to get there. And they were very inviting, you know. So I was kind of set on that path to just kind of hang out with them and open up shows and join bands. And and I did that for about the next 10 years. Right. So. And your influences, where did they come from? Who was really getting into your musical soul at that time? And who has carried that through? Who were some of those original influences? If we're talking about the blues, we go back to like Chicago and people like Otis Rush, Magic Sam. Yeah. Those are whenever I need to go back and just uh, connect myself to the to where I started. That's where I go. But I also listen to a lot of classic rock. You know, I you know around the house I might be cleaning during the pandemic and I'll put on the Allman Brothers at Live at the Fillmore and just yeah. let Mountain Jam go as long as it can go. You know. Oh yeah, I love that. So the jam bands played a big role in it too. So that that jazz element in there, you know, I also listen to a lot of jazz. I listen to Coltrane. I listen to, uh, you know, West Montgomery. I don't play it as much. Right. It's, it's part of my conscious makeup of what you can do to push blues and blues rock further than just the average you know, one, four, five. Right, exactly. Did you, uh, now, you, your evolution as a player, um, did, did it begin as a side, uh, kind of more more as a side man in bands? And then when did you jump and say, I can, I think I can take the helm on some, on a, on a solo career of sorts? Well, I, I made, I tried to make some jumps and then I came back, like may have, have tried a little too soon or I dabbled with side projects while I was a side man. But it wasn't until about, six or seven years ago that I decided I'm not going to work with anybody else, you know, unless Roger Water calls or something, but right. Right. <laughs> right exactly. So, you know, ever since the Blue Heart Revival days, it was kind of my, that was my instigation to, to call Tommy Lepson and start a band with him. So ever yeah. since then, I've been kind of pushing forward the idea of either collaborating like that or fronting the band. Right. And Blue Heart Revival and Revelator Hill were were two pretty big deals for you as your career was evolving, weren't they? And I mean, they continue to be kind of part of your your story. Yeah, I mean, those those that those eras were really formative to where I am now, and I still perform some of those same songs, and we still record together. Uh, so you know, I, I I did a track with Tommy on the last album. That's so great. Who doesn't record with him? He's just amazing. He's like the scope of people that work with Tommy Lepson. Are, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. Oh, I love that. Um, you had um, a record come out um, in 2011, By the Hand. That was your kind of your first solo, um, you know, kind of first solo jump. And um, I remember one of the critics that I, that I read about it said, it's hard not to listen to this record and recognize an artist beginning to hit his creative stride. So that must have felt good that you're, you're kind of maybe making that jump into really beginning your own sound. Was, is that where that album kind of, did that album, was that album kind of a, a turning point of sorts? Yeah, I think it was. I mean, that was the first one. That was the first full-length professional album that I did. Right. Um, so, yeah, it kind of set that that tone for the next few years of making more albums. Absolutely. And there was, there was some Blue Heart Revival, some Revelator, Revelator Hills. We were talking a little bit about 
some yeah. live stuff that you did at the IOTA and and um, also by by the I mean just some some really cool things. You had an album, Acoustic Sessions, come out in 2018. It did win the it did win the whammy. Um, you know, how did that album come about? Uh, it was an EP, and and what was the evolution to 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 do that record? Well, you know, ever since I've uh... I've been playing electric for a long time, but I've always dabbled with acoustic. Mm -hmm. But that was about a point where I started to to less dabble and start to put acoustic and electric on equal footing. Right. And so, you know, I thought, well, I need an acoustic album. And, uh, well, that's not a full album, but that was the idea was to say, well, these songs are written not in an electric format where you write half a song and then you take it to the band and they help finish it. Right were written completely on my own. And that wasn't something that I started with. I didn't start as a singer-songwriter. I've evolved into that. Right. Kind of backwards. Most people, you know, if you're a singer-songwriter, that's usually how you start. It. Yeah. Yeah. But, that's hard to believe. I mean, the way you present yourself. I, when I first started really listening to your music over the last few weeks, especially that, that 2019 record we'll chat about in a minute, the, your self-titled one. Uh, one of my favorite records I've heard in a long time. It's it's in my genre, my wheelhouse of blues rock. I just love it. But that is really interesting. That you, yeah, it was kind of a little bit of a, 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 a kind of a different kind of backwards turn. But wow, how how exciting that must have been to kind of evolve that way. Well, it kind of it kind of saved me too because um, you know if if it was if we had a pandemic during the Revelator Hill era, I can't play a lot of those songs in acoustic guitar. <laughs> They're just not made that way. Right. Those songs on the last album, I'd say. I think there's nine songs. I think eight of them I can play on acoustic. So wow. it kind of, uh, you know, allowed me to live stream at home since March. Uh -huh. uh, and I have fun doing it. And, and, and I'm writing more for the next album. And it's, it's the same way. It's, these songs are created um, to me from the ground up. Right. They're, it's like gardening. You're, you know, you're starting with the dirt. You're not starting with, uh, you know. The fruit you're starting with the the beginning so absolutely I think that's the proper way for at least for me to write a song sometimes, oh, I love sometimes yeah you might write it with the band just depends on the vibe but right now you know, writing on acoustic is the way to go for me well I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that uh that love your music and they want to hear some so why don't we do um a little bit um let's do a song um and you're gonna do a song that's that is from that acoustic sessions record tell us a little bit about the song and then you can jump right in i know people are going to be excited to hear you play it's a song called my everything and it was written when we were on revelator hill was on the road started sketching it in the back of the van and got home and just sat down and, and wrote it on, on the uh, on the wisen board oh that is fantastic well uh here we go there's a little bobby thompson for you Christ. 
screen. Gonna watch the ball. I said I heard things and I'm sure I didn't mean them all. I'll make it back to time for this night. You can have my everything. You can have my everything. That is sweet, man. That oh, that playing, that is Thank some you. that is some lovely playing. Now, when did you start evolve, beginning a lap play play the lap guitar kind of music? Well, to go back to, to what I was saying uh, about playing with blues bands for about ten years, I got a little bit um, of a creative desire to do something else, right. and I had seen somebody play one of these kind of guitars, so I got one. It was really crude. It was really bad, but it took me a few years to get get it down. So, right. You know, the first time I I think that uh, one of the first times we recorded it was on a Soja song on one of their albums. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It is a it is a really unique sound. I just it, it really really sings. Um, you did a, a, a self titled solo record in 2019. Um, again, the one that I had talked a little bit about. How did that? How did that evolve? How did that come about? Because that, that to me is is, you know, that sh that should be out there and all over the place. Uh, the album from last year. Yeah. Um, that kind of evolved. Uh, you know, Revelator Hill. We toured for about uh, two years up and down the road, and we got a little tired, so we decided to take a break. Mm -hmm. um, but we had about six songs in the can. But I had about two songs from Blue Harbor Bible Days that I wanted to get out there, and I was kind of a little trying to figure out how to put them out there. Right. And I had started playing more on my own. So I, thought I just put all those songs together. So it is Revelator Hill and Blue Heart Revival on that album, but I put my name on it. Right. So, so that's kind of how that came about. Songs like On the Ground and, and um, She's uh, a Candle. Yeah, it, it is great. Um, speaking of On the Ground, um, we're going to we're gonna jump uh, out to... Um, the place you see behind me, which is one of my favorite venues locally, Pearl Street Warehouse. Um, I want to say that I believe Pearl Street was one of the, the six venues to reopen in Washington over the last couple of weeks, uh, along with the Hamilton and um, uh, about, yeah, about four or five other, the Kennedy Center and things like that. So it's really nice to see clubs do what they can. I know their distancing is really interesting with the balcony and they have like two or three tables available up there. And it's, it's just, it's a, it's really rough. But again, I, I, I love this uh, version of, we're going to watch a little bit of a snippet of on the ground. And this is with, um, with Darren and Christopher. Talk about how those guys came into your uh, musical world. Well, it, it goes way back with Darren. He, uh, he played right. drums on some of those uh, um, retrospect album tracks like, came to see you and again and good things he's on mm -hmm. drums and uh 
sometime, I think it was in uh, 2018, maybe we were opening some shows for Ron Holloway band and Chris was playing bass. Right. And he was just, uh, he was just such a good bass player, but never overplayed, but always played what was necessary for that style. Mm -hmm. So uh, we just started, we kind of hit it off and started playing together a little bit. So. Oh, I love that. Um, and well, let's go to let's go to Pearl Street Warehouse, people. You're actually going to see some live music, even though it's on living on music here. But you're going to see um, Bobby Thompson, Christopher Brown, and Darren Blessman play a little on the ground from Pearl Street Warehouse. Yeah, man, that is some beautiful music. I, I just love that 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 incarnation. But I love all the incarnations of your music, um, and we'll, we're going to show another another swath of that in a minute. But um, I, I know there's an interesting story about who you warmed up for, and uh, one of my favorite musicians. Yeah, that was earlier this year in February, opening for Davy Knowles. Oh man, that is yeah. great. Good that stuff. is that is great. And and uh, did you play? Did you play play with him uh, during the show? I guess right, or at least during. Yeah, he was very. He was very kind. Uh, it's the second time I met him, and uh, he was really nice, and he, he invited me up to play a couple tunes with him, and we had a blast. Great time. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Davey's, Davey's a real special, real special guy. Um, before we get to uh, the clip, well, let's let's actually talk a little bit about um, the, the other uh, incarnation with Seth, Ryan, and Ben. How did they come into your world, and what is the what is the differentiation between these two kind of ensembles you seem to have, or do they all mix and match? I know they're all going to play with you at the Birch Mirror. Are they going to do a separate set with the three guys and the two, or how is that going to work? And, and how did you meet these guys? Yeah, that's the idea. Is we're going to do right. two two separate short sets, and then all will get up together at the end and see what happens. Um, I love that. The and Friends Band is sort of a uh, built from when you listen to someone else's blues that's just me and ben right he's i'm on bass and, and guitars and it's really uh broken down to just acoustics and very simple um and and the next album's like that it's really broken down to just acoustic guitars wow. with drums and bass but i thought you know what did dylan do man in 60 was it 64 65 he got up with a telly and everyone booed i'm like all right that's how you <laughs> right. acoustic electric is you get a Telecaster and you just keep the band a little mellower. And it's right. less about the jam and less about hardcore, edgy blues rock and more about presenting the acoustic songs in an electric format. So that's what that band, that lineup is about. Um, right. Oh, I love that. Well, let's, um, what, well, as we were talking a little bit earlier about some of these venues that are trying to be innovative and, and experimental and opening outdoor places to play the state theater is doing it and uh also one of my favorite places that i actually got to sing at last year at a beatles tribute which was one of my one of the best experiences i've ever had in my life um jam and java which we all know has been around for so long and they've done some outdoor gigs how did that feel playing out in front in the parking lot of jam and java rather than in that beautiful little room it kind of gave you that feel of like when you just started you know when you're like <laughs> 18 and that's the only place you can play is a parking lot or a backyard <laughs> Yeah, so it kind of mm -hmm. felt that comfortable um you know there was kind of the the little things you didn't know what they were going to be like the crowd or you know car noise or something but it turned out to be really comfortable very comfortable uh, oh that's yeah. great and that's the end for you is that the and friends band that you call them yeah yeah Ryan that's great and ben and seth all right well let's go see these guys the uh bobby thompson and friends playing uh, a, a little music for you outside of jam and java well, about a month ago. <laughs>
call your name In the sheets on my bed The last time you came just that not only the music is wonderful but wow to see people actually playing live and 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 in that parking lot which i you know we're all so familiar with um whether you're going to jam and java or you're passing it on, on the right to wolf trap or or anywhere anywhere in vienna that that must have again bobby that must have felt good to have actual human beings out there what didn't it? it it felt good and then those human beings a lot of them were my friends and some of them i hadn't seen in a while mm. so that was even even more special so it felt like a little reunion in a way Oh, I love that. And again, it was shot by uh, Stevie Combs, who's a music maven of this area. Um, he, I, yeah, do you, he got you, a little front row seat there, and he got comfortable. He was probably the first one there, grabbed the seat, you know, got yeah. the video ready. Talk about people that are hurting that, that there isn't any live music. I, I bet Stevie's one of those that really is hurting the mo one of the most. But um, but what a, what a neat guy. And again, little feet um, through and through. So that's great. Um, well, You've got, um, as you're going through this, um, again, you've been one of the more productive musicians, I, I think. There, there have been you know, many that have done what you're doing, but not, a, not everyone. And you really have done some neat things. And you've got this new record coming out. How has that got, gotten put together? Did that, was that planning to come out in 2021 or earlier during the pandemic? Or how did it evolve? I was trying to get it out this year. In fact, uh, when I, I'm turning 50 next month, when I turned 40, I, I didn't have any albums, and that was right around 2011's By the Hand. And I thought, man, let me see if I can get an album out a year. Right. Just, you know, to, to not just to get an album out, but to create something new. Um, so, you know, we're not putting the album out until next year, but it's, it's you know, all new material. All new uh, songs. So. Fantastic. Well, I can't, I can't, I can't wait for that, too. Um, We've got one more song for you to play, and I think it's from that album. How did this song come to be, and and, and um, how you know how did it? How was it written? Well, you know, you you asked me how I prepared for this pandemic. I actually sort of prepared a little bit last year because I was spending time alone writing songs, and I think I wrote this last September. We had a really foggy night. I was mm -hmm. home alone. The moon was shining pretty bright. Right. Just thinking about my girlfriend, and the, most of the songs. You know, or like that. <laughs> I love that. That's fantastic. Well, let's do a little, uh, a little fog to clear from the upcoming Bobby Thompson record. Sit here waiting for the fog to clear. Full moon night. Oh my dear, rub you land. I never said might be better as it made no sense. My heart is twisting around through selfishness. You lost your crown. You're sitting there and waiting for the fog to clear. Waiting on the night and I call you dear. Have to wait, wait for the night to burn. Black ashes blown away. When will I ever learn? The noisy can drink midnight tea. They say don't settle for just a mystery. My care for you gets turned around. It happens this. Can't watch you drown. The late never wait for the fog. Wait on you the night and call you dear. No more way, I might lose my mind. Gather up your stone, 
and retreat inside. Boots made of leather, sheets by the sea. As blue as hair that we go naturally. Now this love is upside down. The moon's new, won't get us down. The morning is awake for the spark of fear. The sunshine is anxious to call you near. Ah, beautiful, man. I love that. And boy, we are all uh, certainly waiting for the fog to clear, aren't we, with this thing? Um, but, you know, again, seems like you've been able to continue to grow, man, and foster this musical, beautiful musical career. You feel, you know, I know I know it's been stunted not going live, but you, you still feel on a pretty good track? I would think so. What, well, that's part of the blues music is you take whatever life gives you and you create something out of it. So, right. That's my philosophy with any hard times we deal with, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And you're, I'm sure you're not alone in the blues in the blues world. Well, Bobby, man, thanks so much for coming on Living on Music. Um, I hope we will be able to do another show in the future also where maybe we're in person together talking and, um, and, uh, and not Skyping and virtualing. But I wanted to be able to get you on and get you to be a part of this, this world that we've created. And uh, good luck with the new record and the, the, again, Bobby's going to be at the Birchmere on November 20th. I have to think that it's either sold out already or close um, because the, the tickets are limited. So if you want to go, I'd pick something up quick and you want to want to get out to the Birchmere on November 20th and, and, and see, see Bobby Thompson. Thanks again, man, so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Wow. Um, again, just a fabulous time talking to Bobby Thompson. Um, what a great player and, and what a neat guy um, to be able to kind of get through this pandemic, create some older music, mix some things together and, and continue to kind of keep himself going. It's just what a wonderful time. Real quick update on coming up on live, Living on Music. We have got some incredible people coming along to, to, um, to, to bring to you guys. Um, we have uh, November 2nd, Steve McKay from School of Rock, who runs School of Rock um, here in um, uh, Alexandria. He has created this incredible um, place, uh, as we've all seen. You know, a lot of us saw the Jack Black movie, but there's a lot more to it than that. Um, and we want to be sure Steve talks not only about um, kind of what's been going on to keep kids, um, you know, involved with music during the pandemic, but how he got involved as a musician to run School of Rock. So what a wonderful uh, show we're going to have. And we're going to show some video of some of the recent School of Rock performances. So join us next Monday for that. November 9th, real quick, Annie O'Neill. She's a Seattle-based singer, songwriter, and she is something else. She has some powerhouse vocals and so this raw, rootsy style. She's remarkable. And she's also friends with the Hendrixes. Yes, Jimmy's family, and played at a recent Jimi Hendrix 50th Memorial um, weekend in Seattle. She will be joining me on November 9th. She is something else. Uh, Laura Segaris, who actually Bobby has played with uh, and played the Birchmere with a number of years ago and played side music for her with her. She is something very special. 40 songs, five records, she spans folk, Americana, alt country, blues, um, amazing artist. She also did this thing called Lead Me. Um, and I posted it a couple of days ago, and it's it's Laura Sigaris, T-S-A, like Sakumas, uh, G-A-R-R-I-S, and she is something very special. Go find that. Um, and we'll be talking more about her as we get closer to the 16th. On November 23rd, it is Jim Ebert back on Living on Music and Cancer Can Rock. 
and he's going to have two um, cancer survivors from his studio performances that are going to come on the show and play for us. We had one show about two months ago that just blew my mind, one of my favorite shows we've done um, with a couple of just amazing guys that played with him. Um, and also on November 30th, Seth Keibel. And Seth, Seth is one of Mid-Atlantic's premier woodwind specialists. So maybe uh, Nita and, and uh, Johan, you'll also dig that a little even more than normal. Um, he's worked with some of the best klezmer jazz swing bands. So we're really trying to mix it up with local musicians here on Living on Music. And that spans our next month. And we've got some amazing people coming up after that. I'll, I, I, I tease them, but I want to be sure uh, to give you a time to, to get ready for those guests. But get ready for next Monday, Steve McKay and School of Rock. Real quick, this week on, on ZTV, tomorrow night at 7, Susan... Mulligan Fleischman is back at the Animal Welfare League of Alexandria. And you've got to watch this tomorrow night at 7. They have these amazing, amazing pets um, looking for, again, new, loving, and good fit families for them. This is a great, great thing because right now there are a lot of people suffering, but there are animals suffering as well. A lot of shelters, a lot of things like that. So go tomorrow night at 7. Come right here and watch um, this amazing show with Susan Mulligan Fleischman. Uh, Wednesday night is Trash or Treasure. All right, guys, check this out. You know, um, this is a show that's going to be um, Monica Schiavo. She brings her expertise and she's evaluating some of the treasures that Alexandrians have on hand. So is it trash? Is it treasure? It's like that PBS show. And um, I'm just trying to think of it like for the last five minutes um, where they some they bring in their stuff. Uh, just, I love that show, too. And it's just escaping me. Maybe it's my age. Um, but it's that, um, sh you know, you look at something and is it worth, you know, twenty dollars or two thousand dollars? So that's going to be uh, tr uh, trash or treasure on Wednesday nights. And then on Thursday, it's the Virginia, Virginia Amos show. And Virginia's guest is Felicia Rogers of the Buy Nothing Group. Not going to even tease it. You go come on the show to, on Thursday night at 7. This is ZTV, guys. You should have it on a bookmark. Have it on your computer now and then. Pop in when you can. But every Monday through Thursday at 7 o'clock, we've got these live shows. And uh, we love doing this for you. So come join us. And Lucella Flaherty, the amazing Lucelle, um, out there shooting all the time, as well as um, Susan Fleischman's out live a lot of the time. So please become a part of the ZTV family. We really, really love it. Antique Roadshow, thank you publisher Mary Wadland. It's Antique Roadshow, and that's what um, Trash or Treasure on Wednesday nights at 7 is going to be like. So, hey, if you've got something at home, you know, um, maybe it's worth a lot. Maybe you, you might end up getting rid of it. You're trying to reduce clutter. Check it out. Trash or Treasure Wednesday, Virginia, um, is on Thursday. Um, once again, Living on Music is a production of Zebra Press, the executive producer, our man behind the scenes who runs the show, gets us going. Uh, is David McClure, Zebra Press publisher, is Mary Wadland. We love you, Mary. You can visit the Zebra at zebra.org, and you can also go on the Good News Zebra Facebook page and just find some great stories all over. Who doesn't need good news right now? And it's, you know, real news. There's some things about the medical situations or struggles that people are going through, but it's how to help. It's great stuff. Go to the zebra.org, go to the Good News Zebra Facebook page, and of course, the October 2020 edition of the Zebra newspaper is out. You've seen it all over town. But the November one is right around the corner. So get ready for that. That'll be out within the within the week, next week, I guess. Uh, you can get a subscription at zebra.org. And you can also find it all over Alexandria at newspaper boxes. There's 125 of them, 400 bulk drop locations where the grocery stores, restaurants. Um, plus, you can read it online at zebra.org. Once again, I want to thank the great Bobby Thompson. Go see him anywhere you can. Go to Bobby, Doms Bobby Thompson on Facebook. Um, go to his website, Bobby Thompson Net, I believe it is, dot net, and uh, you'll really, really love to fall in love with his music because he's only beginning a lot of his stuff. He's going to come out of this thing and rock. And this Monday, the first Monday coming up, um, this Monday coming up actually is Steve McKay of um, School Can Rock. Um, or uh, excuse me, um, School of Rock. And boy, I can't wait to talk about that amazing organization with him. Watch some kids from his organization play. We're going to have a blast next Monday at 7. And again, it's the first Monday of every month is the Zebra newspaper and zebra.org with the newspaper on there. It is great stuff, guys. You'll really, really love seeing the content on there from my amazing Zebra colleagues. Um, again, right now, it's hard to find some good news sometimes. Um, you know, you're we're looking around, we're trying to find what we can to kind of keep our joy. That's why Living on Music is trying to bring you that every Monday night at seven, and a lot of my colleagues at Zebra TV, ZTV are doing the same thing. But what I think we say 
a lot here on ZTV is when you can find the opportunity to be the good news in someone's life. Take care, y'all.